All right, so today we're going to do a physics review. So we're going to talk about any physics concepts that we would have learned in Science 9 uh, and talk about where they're going to apply in Science 10 so that you're ready to go once you get into Science 10. Uh, so before we start today, I just want to say this is our last video lesson. This is it. This is the last one I'm recording for Science 9. We, of course, will have our Zoom on Friday, uh, plus our, our final farewell Zoom the next week after that. Um, but apart from that, in terms of YouTube lessons, this is, this is it. So thank you to those of you that actually stuck through all of this. It hasn't been easy at all times, right? But it, uh, in sticking through all this, you've actually set yourself for great success, set yourself up, sorry, for great success going forward. So in other words, what I'm trying to say, not just reading off a script here, is by doing what you've been doing and by watching these videos and by taking notes and by still engaging in this, you have put yourself so much forward, it's not even funny. You're gonna really be thankful for the hard work you guys have put in uh, going forward and you will notice very minimal downsides when you move on to Science 10, as long as you've been sticking through this. Uh, but anyway, today what we're gonna do is we're gonna review the concepts from Science 9 that will tie into the physics unit during Science 10 next year. Uh, so physics as a thing has not been something we've really talked about too much, at least in very specific terms so far in Science 9. We had units that were physics related, we'll get into that in a second, um, but these concepts were mostly just spread out all over the place. In, in Science 10, you're gonna hone right in on physics. Uh, physics, of course, is a very diverse and very interesting field of science. Uh, it'll be offered, because we offer it only every two years at our school, it'll be offered when you guys are in grade 11. Uh, and of course, I'm the physics teacher at the school, so obviously I'm gonna be a little biased in this lesson, so not trying to sell you on physics, but uh, anyway, um, we'll, we'll get to it. One other thing I wanna say is don't forget that on Thursday, June 18th, which by the time you're watching this is probably tomorrow, uh, we will have a formative quiz assessing our understanding of these essential concepts that lead into Science 10. Uh, your cheat sheet that you're making will be absolutely critical for this, which by the way, that cheat sheet is due by the end of Wednesday, June 17th, which again, you should be watching it on that day, so it'll be due by the end of today unless you're watching this video early. Um, so make sure you have that in and your cheat sheet will be super useful uh, for that uh, formative quiz. Uh, and again, that formative quiz is going to be uh, categorized into three sections. There's going to be a chemistry section, a biology section, and a physics section. It's not going to be super long by any means. It's going to be on, uh, on a piece of loose leaf paper, though, like the last couple ones we've done. Uh, but anyway, let's get to it. Let's actually start doing our physics here. Uh, wait, so before we do that, actually, i got to remember, we actually got to talk about what in Science 9 actually leads into physics. Uh, we had two units in Science 9 that I would call physics units. Uh, the last one we did was electrical principles. That was almost entirely physics. Uh, and then the very first unit of the year, which was space exploration, is also physics. Uh, unfortunately, in terms of science 10 physics, a lot of stuff in space exploration doesn't come back. Uh, you'll see the space exploration stuff come back when you get into physics 20 and a little bit of physics 30 as well, but mostly physics 20, uh, so grade 11 physics. Um, but yeah, anyway, that's what we're getting into. Most, if not everything that we're going to talk about today is uh, right from electrical principles. So we'll keep it pretty quick today because that is hopefully quite fresh in your minds. But still, write this down on your cheat sheet as we go through. All right, so the physics concepts you guys are going to need and what we're going to go over today are the fact that atoms are made up of protons, neutrons, electrons. We talked about this in the chemistry um, video, but it's important to go through again because, again, that is something that connects chemistry to physics. Uh, we'll talk about the various types of energy. Uh, we'll talk about the law of conservation of energy. That one is huge. Like that is gonna be one of the biggest things you need going into science 10. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about formulas connecting voltage, current, resistance, power, current, voltage, and power, energy, and time. Just the three formulas that we used in the last unit. Um, but more important than that is we're gonna talk about rearranging formulas to find your wanted value. These triangles are a great strategy to use. They're fine but ultimately you need to be able to be confident in rearranging a formula mathematically to solve for your missing variables. So make sure you know how to do that as well. Uh, last thing we're gonna do today is calculating efficiency. Uh, this is also pretty important, but what's kind of funny is in science 10, this efficiency calculation comes right back, but it's pretty much exactly the same as it was in science nine. So it's like, once you've got it in science nine, you're, you're good for science 10, we'll leave it at that. All right, let's get rolling. So atomic structure, I want you to recall, atoms are made up of protons, neutrons, and electrons. Protons and neutrons are found in the nucleus of an atom. That's the center of the atom. Uh, the number of protons is your atomic number, which can be found in the corner. It's the smaller number on the periodic table uh, for each one of your elements. Now, your number of protons also dictates what kind of an element you have. So in other words, if something had, for instance, eight protons, we know it has to be, by definition, 
oxygen, right? Oxygen has to have eight protons. Protons are what determines what an element is. Uh, now, neutrons are also in the nucleus, but they have no charge. The number of neutrons is your atomic mass minus the atomic number. So this big number minus the small number. Uh, now, electrons, of course, they orbit around the nucleus, uh, and they actually have a negative charge. Atoms have the same number of electrons as protons. So an oxygen atom has eight protons, but it also has eight electrons. Uh, however, if they are charged, they don't. Remember, a charged uh, individual atom is actually called an ion. Uh, if it's charged, then it has a different number of electrons. All right, so types of energy here, or forms of energy, as this picture shows, the same picture I showed you guys before. Uh, basically, all you need to know from this uh, is that there's a ton of different kinds of energy. And maybe you want to jot this chart down on your cheat sheet. I think that would probably be a really good idea. Uh, because in physics, when you get into uh, science 10, I'm pretty sure every single one of these kinds of energy you see on this form uh, come back. Uh, nuclear energy might be the only one that doesn't, but when you get into physics 30, uh, this is big in physics 30. I know some of you have uh, siblings right now in physics 30. You can ask them, oh, is nuclear energy something you talk about in physics 30? It's literally what we spent our entire like last like two weeks kind of breaking down, right? But anyway, you guys don't even know that. If you copy this down, though, you're good to go. Uh, energy in terms of categories can be either kinetic energy or potential energy. Kinetic energy means movement, right? It's moving things. Types of kinetic energy include thermal energy. Heat is actually moving particles. When you have something that's really warm, the individual atoms are like vibrating really quick. That makes thermal energy. So it's a form of kinetic. Mechanical energy is a mixture of kinetic and potential, but we'll call it kinetic for now. Electrical energy is the energy of uh, really it's just particles, but it should be electrons moving through a wire. So it's moving again. And magnetic energy uh, also uh, is uh, using energy to push or pull magnetic objects. So there's a movement on that one. Uh, potential energy is like chemical energy, like what we have in food or fuel or inside of a battery. Uh, elastic energy, you'll talk about that in physics 20 and I think a little bit in science 10. Uh, nuclear energy, I've already mentioned. Gravitational energy is a huge one. That one's so big for both uh, grade 10 physics and uh, physics 20 when you're in grade 11. Anyway, we'll move on. Law of conservation of energy. This is another really, really big one. The law of conservation of energy says that energy cannot be created or destroyed, but it can just change from one form to another. So in other words, when you drop something, like if you're standing on like a little cliff or something here, when you drop something, as soon as you let it go, it has something called potential energy or gravitational potential energy, right? So you let go of it, there's gravitational potential energy stored in that. But then as time goes on, that potential energy turns into kinetic energy. Uh, and the further down you go, the more kinetic energy it gets because it's going to speed up as it drops. So you're converting gravitational potential energy into kinetic energy. Now, when electrical energy runs through something like a toaster, it's changing it into thermal energy. So again, it's energy just changing from one form to another. Uh, another one is when light energy hits a solar panel, the light energy is turning into electrical energy. So we can use it to power our homes, right? Those are energy transformations that occur. The energy is not created or destroyed. It just changes from one form to another. That's all. All right, now working with formulas, uh, according to one of my physics 20 students that I had this year, uh, physics is really just spicy math, okay? So there's gonna be a lot of formulas that you're gonna need to work with, and you're gonna need to know how to rearrange the formula as well. Like I mentioned before, these triangles are a nice way of starting. They're kind of just like a first step into dealing with these formulas. They're just a strategy. But ultimately, you need to be able to rearrange a formula for a value that you want to calculate. So for instance, uh, we know V is equal to I times R. If we wanted to find, let's say, R, we would have to get R all by itself. Now, in terms of math, uh, in order to get something all by itself, you just undo whatever's happening to it. So what's happening to the R is it's being multiplied by uh, I, Undoing a multiplication is the same thing as division. So to get rid of the i here, you just got to divide by i. But also in math, whatever you do to one side of an equation, in order to keep things balanced, you have to do the same thing to the other side of the equation. So I would have to divide this side by i as well. Dividing by i over here is going to get rid of it, and that's going to leave me with r equals v divided by i. So I was able to use an algebraic approach, a mathematical approach to rearrange a formula for the thing that I wanted. Now, yes, our triangle can provide, it, uh, provide us with this with just a visual check. But again, it is really important for you to gain a skill on how to rearrange a formula. If we were to use this triangle, you would just cover R and say, oh, it's V over I. 
really easy. But once you get into uh, higher levels of physics, you're going to see you're going to have some formulas that aren't quite so nice with that. Like I know there's one uh, where it's like D equals B I times T plus one half A T squared. That's that's not going to have a triangle for you to just solve, right? You are going to need to know. Oh, if I want to get A all by itself, I got to move everything else over to the other side and get A all by itself. Don't worry about that until next year. I'm not going to scare you with that right now. You will learn it. Um, but just make sure we start building these skills. It's really important to know how to work with formulas. All right, so here's an example. Using the formula V equals IR, calculate the current running through the wire with a resistance uh, of five ohms and a voltage of 60 volts. I'm not going to use the triangle on this one. I'm gonna use a little bit of math and I'm gonna rearrange this. We wanna find the current. This is what we want. Current is I. So I wanna get I all by itself. To get I all by itself, we're gonna to need to divide both sides by R. So if I divide by R here, it's gonna be gone. And whatever I do to one side of an equation, I gotta to do to the other side of the equation as well. So that leaves us with I is equal to V divided by R. Now, we know our voltage and we know our resistance, it's five ohms. Uh, we just have to plug those numbers in, right? So I is gonna equal your voltage, so 60, divided by your resistance, which is five. Therefore, we have I is equal to 60 divided by 5, and 60 divided by 5 is 12. And then don't forget your units, current is measured in amps. So 12 amps. Or if you prefer, you can say just I is equal to 12 and then a capital A. Both of those are the same thing. Okay? So again, make sure you know how to rearrange formulas. These are the ones we would have dealt with in Science 9. Uh, and again, even these examples are really good to put down in your cheat sheet. So that might, that might be useful. All right, here's another one. Using the formula P equals E over T, that's power is equal to energy over time. Find the amount of time in seconds it would take for a 100 watt light bulb to consume 45,000 joules of electrical energy. Okay, so this time we're looking to find the time. So time is what we're looking for. We wanna get time all by itself. Now I chose this one in particular because it's a bit more challenging than the other ones would be. Uh, notice E is being divided by time. So you might say, oh, well, you just gotta do the opposite and get rid of the E here, but unfortunately, E is what's being acted on here, so you can't exactly just divide by E or anything like that. It doesn't, it doesn't quite work that way. So here's what I would do first. If we wanna get T all by itself, let's actually write that formula out again. P is equal to E over T. If we wanna get T all by itself, maybe what we could do is move T to the other side first. Since E is being divided by T, we can just do the opposite of divide by T to move it over to the other side. So the opposite of divide by T is times by T. So timesing by T here is gonna cancel them out, but whatever you do to one side of an equation, you have to do to the other side of the equal sign. So I gotta make sure I'm timesing this by T as well. So notice now we have P times T equals E. Now we're still not at the point where we have our time all by itself. We wanna get time all by itself, but at least now we're a little bit closer. This is kind of like the whole V equals IR thing. Uh, we want to get T by itself. Let's just get rid of the P right here uh, by dividing it over to the other side. So again, if we divide both sides by P, that's going to knock that out there. And we're going to have T is therefore equal to E over P. Now, I can already hear some of you say, like, oh, well, why not just use a triangle? The triangle is way easier. Again, my point is there's going to be cases where you won't be able to have a triangle. So it's better to build these skills right now with something a little simpler then have to worry about building those skills later when you have something a lot more advanced. Anyway, now that we have a formula for this, T equals E over P, we can just throw our numbers in. So T is going to equal our energy, which is 45,000, divided by our power, which is 100. Uh, and therefore, T is going to be 45,000 divided by 100. That's going to be 450 seconds. Because the standard unit of time is seconds, especially when you're going uh, oh, not watts, joules divided by watts. It'll give you seconds. Okay, uh, and that is what we wanted. We wanted it in seconds. Now, if it had asked us for minutes, we would have gotten our answer in seconds here, and then you would have to convert it to minutes by dividing by 60, for example, right? Anyway, moving on. All right, efficiency is the next thing up. Uh, efficiency is a percentage that represents how much of the input energy uh, used to power a device is actually converted into the type of energy we want. Basically, it's just your output energy divided by your input energy and then times by 100. Now, one thing I noticed, especially on some of the assessments we gave, was some people aren't sure which one's the output and which one's the input. The output is what's actually getting uh, produced, right? So it's what's actually becoming the form of energy we want. So in other words, if you were using a toaster, for example, 
the output energy is the amount of thermal energy being produced, whereas the input energy would be the amount of electricity it's using. If you want an easier way of remembering this, and I don't like teaching it this way, but again, I, it, it can help you if you're really, really stuck, um, your output energy is always going to be the smaller number. You will never have a bigger number on the top in an efficiency formula, because if you did, that would mean that you created energy out of nothing, which as we know from the law of conservation of energy, you can't make energy out of nothing. So the smaller number must be on the top. Anyway, we'll do an example here. An electric lawnmower turns electrical energy into mechanical energy. Of course, mechanical energy is the spinning blades that are cutting the grass. Uh, it has a power rating of 1,440 watts. However, only 360 watts of mechanical power is actually produced. Calculate the efficiency of this lawnmower. Well, depending on your perspective, you can either say, oh, well, it's gotta be the output over the input. Output is what's actually being produced, so it's this 360 divided by this 1,440. Or if you wanna go the easy route, you can just go, oh, it's a smaller number over the bigger number, okay? So efficiency, I'll just call it EFF, is 360 divided by 1440, and then don't forget to times by 100 because that's gonna turn it into a percentage. A lot of you were forgetting that times by 100 piece, uh, and you were just getting a decimal number. We wanna go further than that. Anyway, I'll calculate this real quick, 360 divided by 1440, and then times by 100, and it is a perfect 25%. So in other words, this lawnmower is 25% efficient, or in other words, only 25% of the energy it uses is actually used to cut the lawn. Now what happens to the other 75%? Energy can't be created or destroyed, so what happened to it? Well, there's a lot of places where the energy could go. Uh, remember, uh, when motors operate, uh, the friction of the moving parts actually produces heat. So there's gonna be a little bit of heat. This is obviously an exaggeration drawing steam coming off this thing, but there's gonna be a little bit of heat coming off of this. It's gonna be warm after operating for a while. That heat is thermal energy. So some of the energy that went into this became thermal energy. Uh, and then another form of energy, no big surprise with lawnmowers, especially when your neighbor's out like 5 a.m., uh, it makes a lot of noise, right? And that's sound energy. So a lot of the energy is lost as sound uh, as the motor is spinning and, and the blades are turning. Anyway, that's it. So your task now, it's the same as the task has been the last couple of days, although one extra step, I guess, is to hand this in. Um, make sure you're filling in your physics notes here. Make sure you're meeting all the criteria. Make sure you're making this cheat sheet as useful as it possibly can be for you going forward into Science 10. You're making this cheat sheet for yourself. I'm having a look at it, but ultimately this is something that you will be carrying forward to help you next year in Science 10. So make sure you've got all the sections filled out. Uh, I would uh, imagine you would have already filled out chemistry and biology. If you didn't, well then you got a lot of work ahead of you today. Uh, but make sure you have all those sections filled out. Take a photo of it or scan it if you have a scanner. Send it in on Google Classroom. Just attach it to the Google Classroom post and then press turn in. Uh, and then you're good to go. Uh, Friday Zoom, uh, we will go over the, uh, the formative quiz that you guys will write on Thursday. Um, and we'll also maybe take a look at some of our cheat sheets and talk about what we noted with them. But aside from that, we're done. We're free. Holy smokes. So get this done. Get it out of the way. Uh, talk to you on the, the Friday on Zoom. And uh, then we'll have our farewell the, the following Monday or Tuesday. Anyway, thanks so much, guys. Ask if you have any questions. Uh, and other than that, talk to you soon.